Thank you for listening and welcome to the Microsoft Dynamics NAV End of Financial Year Training with KPMG. I'm Caroline Faulkner and in this video I'm going to cover the various tasks you need to complete at the end of the financial year. Now today we're looking at NAV 2017, but regardless of the version of NAV you're on, the processes that I'm going to show you are done in the same way. I'm going to start by taking you through closing the accounting periods for the year and creating the periods for the new one. To do this, we need to go to the fiscal year menu and open the accounting periods page. You'll note this is a list of all the accounting periods we currently have set up in NAV, including the ones we've previously closed. When we close the financial year, the dates are then locked, and this stops users from posting documents such as sales invoices and purchase invoices into that previous year. Only general journal adjustments are able to be posted into a period that's been closed. So in order to close a financial year, we simply select the close year action in the ribbon. And we say yes to the question to close that year. And this will go through and tick the closed field on all of those um, periods through to the end of the year, as it has done here. Next, we need to create the new year so that we have a year open ahead. We simply select the create year function in the action ribbon, ensure that the dates are correct and select OK. And we can see that these new periods have been opened. The next task we need to carry out is closing the income statement. To do this, we need to select the close income statement function on the fiscal year menu. There are a number of fields that we need to complete to make sure that the closing journals are created correctly. So first, we need to check that the year, fiscal year ending date is correct. We need to select the general journal template, which is general in this instance. And then we need to select the general journal batch. We recommend using a different batch to your default so that you can easily identify the transactions later. So in this instance, we'll select the year end batch that we've created. Next, we enter the document number, which will be applied to all the relevant journal lines. So here we'll enter YE31217. We define the relevant retains earnings account from our general ledger. And we have a posting description, which will be applied to all of the general ledger entries once the journal lines are posted. And we'll add the year to the end of this as well. In the close by section, we define if we want the journal lines to be created by business unit, and this is relevant for consolidation companies carrying out year end. If we're not running consolidation, we simply leave this field unchecked. If we want to have the journal lines created by dimension, we drill down on the dimensions field and select all of the relevant dimensions that we're needing to report on later. Once we're happy with all the selections, we select OK, and the system will run through and create the general journal entries for our closing year. We have a confirmation message, and now we can go and open the general journal in the year end batch, and we can see all of our entries here have been created. What we can see is that we have uh, the posting date defined with C, and this indicates that they are closing year entries. We can see that the document number has come through, as well as the description. And this will ensure that we're able to easily identify the closing entry transactions at a later date. If we're happy with all of these, we can simply select Post in the Actions ribbon, and the journal lines will be posted. Now imagine after we finalised our year end, we received some additional charges. As I mentioned earlier, although we have closed the year, we can still create and post general journals to make adjustments in the previous year. So to do this, we open the general journal batch, we create the relevant entries, and post.
After we've posted the journal, we need to run the closed income statement again so that we ensure that this and any other transactions are closed off. These transactions are tagged with a prior year transaction setting so that it recognises it when we run the closed income statement function again. So if we go back to our fiscal year menu and we select our closed income statement again, and we run it for the same date periods. We enter a document number. And we ensure that our settings are correct and we select OK. It goes through and creates any additional entries. We go and have a look at the general journals for that year end batch. we can see that we have two more to post. To ensure we've closed the year and all the transactions are correct, we can go to the chart of accounts and by filtering on the dates, including the C at the beginning of the ending date, we can see that the net change field is blank for all of our income statement accounts. This means all of our transactions for the year are balanced on the income statement and the financial year activities are finalised. Thank you for your time today. We hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions or require more information, please contact our support desk by phone or on email.